In this episode of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the performance of Ilya Samsonov. Yes, he's had his struggles, but last night he really shined. We talk about the Capitals and where do they all fit in in the playoffs. How do you think the Capitals will play? And then we're going to talk about next year. Yes, you always got to be kind of looking down the road. What moves do the Capitals need to make at the end of this season? We'll talk about all of that and more next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome in to this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. This podcast is free and it's available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, view as well. We are on YouTube. Just look us up on YouTube. It is Locked On Capitals. My name is Dan Holm. You can find me at DanCaps218. You can find this podcast at Locked On Caps. So thank you again so much for joining me today. Uh, It's a big day, isn't it, today? It's the beginning of baseball, and I know that this is a hockey podcast, but if you are from the D.C. area, you know it is the first day of baseball, and you should be cheering for your Washington Nationals, the Washington Nationals who are in rebuild, kind of like what the Capitals will be facing in uh, the years to come, I assume. And uh, I, I'm just, I'm not going to go at, out and talk a lot about baseball, but um, I'm going to we'll talk a little bit about it. It's its okay. It's the first day of the baseball season. It's going to be Patrick Corbin versus Max Scherzer. Of course, we know Max Scherzer has that history uh, with the Washington Nationals as he helped them win the uh, World Series in 2019. And then through that big trade uh, where they lost Max Scherzer and Trey Turner to the Dodgers. And we got Josiah Gray. And, um, you know, and Kiebert Ruiz and among some other players looking back on that in hindsight, I know that there's a lot of fans out there that said it was a big mistake, but if you look at it, they were expiring contracts. And how do you think that the nationals are going to play this year? It's going to be interesting. Uh, just a quick, what, what do you guys hit? Think about it. Hit me up at, um, Dan caps two and eight. Where do you think the nationals will finish at the end of the season. I'm being hopeful for him. It is a rebuild. I don't want to go at length about baseball because this is a Capitals podcast, but I am being hopeful for this Nationals team, and I hope that the rebuild doesn't take too long. All right, where we're going to start off tonight is with Ilya Samsonov and his great play last night. Yes, Ilya Samsonov, the one that uh, has had struggles throughout the season. I think he really shined last night, don't you all? I mean, I think that he did let in some what I would call soft goals, but all in all, I think he played well. And I think that that is what the doctor ordered for Ilya Samsonov and the Washington Capitals. It's just like there's a a checklist. They're like, well, okay, we know what we have in Ilya Samsonov. Um, And, you know, they were playing against a big opponent in the form of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I think that he played well. Uh, The Capitals got a win, and that's all that really matters. I don't think that there was any glaring mistakes that he made out there. But there are going to be a lot of questions in net if the Capitals make a quick exit. We'll talk about that later in the show. But there's, a, I mean, just right now, I'm going to be happy with how Ilya, Ilya Samsonov played. He allowed a power play goal with 250 left, but the Capitals and Samsonov held on for a much needed 4-3 to win at Capital One Arena as Samsonov earned a win in his first start in nearly two weeks. He made a couple of big saves throughout the game. Coach Peter Laviolette said, you need that. You need those big ones. And I thought he was good, but he was also seemed to keep himself in the game and dialed in. He had to, and he looked focused. If you, you know, they kind of zoom up the camera on the goalie and they were zooming it up on Ilya Samsonov. If you looked in his eyes, he looked focused. He looked like a man on a mission. And he stood on his head for that Capitals team because there's a lot of uncertainty with the Capitals, most notably in the goaltending department. So it was reassuring that uh, Ilya Samsonov played well. I'm like, if he 
if he allows a bunch of goals, uh, you know, right in the beginning of the game, I don't know where the Capitals are going to turn. I mean, if he had a bad game and the Capitals lost this, say, you know, they were winning for a line share of the game, but they kind of started to lose it a little bit towards the end of the season. If they lost this game, I do not know where the Capitals would turn in net. So it was good on Ilya Samsonov that he was able to get the win. In the win over the defending champion, Samsonov made 25 saves on 28 Tampa Bay shots. But there were a few, notably a big stick save in the first period that Washington needed throughout the night. And it kind of reminded a lot of people of that Braden Holpe moment. Uh, he was well known for making saves similar to that. So just all in all, he stood up to the challenge. They pushed and pressed the entire game, Laviolette said. They were behind. They kept coming. And without that, you're going to need some saves from your goaltender. And he gave them to us tonight. And, you know, it's all about giving credit where credit's due. You know, there's a lot of people um, on social media and myself included that have spoken negatively about Ilya Samsonov. But like I said, give credit where credit's due. Ilya played great against Tampa and we look for bigger and better things from him. You, ca you can't just look at the negative. You also have to look at the positive if you're going to be objective. That's what it's all about. The Capitals' goaltending situation has been in flux for a majority of the year, but recently Vitek Vanacek has been named the team's number one starter. In turn, Samsonov has just made three starts since February 26 and has taken a clear backseat role. And uh, Ilya Samsonov was kind of thrust into the number one position after Vitek Vanacek got injured in the game against the Penguins. And uh, let's be honest, he didn't play that well. And uh, consistency has been always uh, the problem with Ilya Samsonov. So hopefully he can string together some wins. But over the last few games, Vanacek's play has slipped. He's just 1-4-0 and zero in his last five starts with a .863 save percentage and a 4.16 goals against average. That led Laviolette to say earlier in the week he was looking for someone to take control of the number one starting job for the Washington Capitals, and they need that. For the longest time, they had consistent net minding in the form of Brayden Holpe, Brayden, uh, excuse me, Philip Grubauer and Brayden Holpe. But, and, and that was the tandem for quite some time for that Washington Capitals team. Um, but they're kind of struggling for that. Like I said, I think that the Capitals were kind of left in a position when Henrik Lundqvist got, had that health condition, where he had an um, uh, issue with his heart, that they were like, well, this is what we're going with. We're going with Sam Sonoff and Vitek Vanacek. Come hell or high water, this is who we're going with. And uh, I don't think that they really addressed the situation. With Sam Sonoff between the pipes, the Capitals jumped out to an early lead and hung on to it, something that's plagued them in recent games. I think Sammy's safe to keep it where it was a huge, and that kind of goes hand in hand with our record, especially our home record in getting out to a better start, defenseman John Carlson said. So what he's talking about there is that he was out and he was playing huge because if the Capitals fell behind like they did against Minnesota, who knows if they would have won. It's always tough when you're playing from behind. After Wednesday, just 12 games remain before the postseason begins with a back-to-back -back upcoming over the weekend. It's expected both Samsonov and Vanacek will get game time, and they're going to have to test them, see what they have in the tank. You know, like I've said, they have they have some depth in Hershey. They have uh, Fukali. They have Phoenix Copley. They're, they do have options if one of those guys falters and they do not believe that they're ready to head into the playoffs. And it's reassuring to know that they have that because if you don't have that, you don't know really where to turn, do you? It's It kind of puts you in a bad spot. So the Capitals are going to have to be ready for the task at hand at hand. And that is next, the Pittsburgh Penguins. They play them on Saturday. So it looks uh, to be that uh, Vitek Vanacek will most likely get the start. That article I was talking about there was from NBC Sports Washington. All right. After the break, we are going to talk about the Washington Capitals and what changes will need to be made next year. Yes, I don't know what's going to happen this season, but we know that next season is coming either way. So the Capitals are going to have to make some changes. And it's being talked about that one change needs to be made in particular. What is that change? I'll talk about that change after the break. But first, this is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right things to Built Bar, it almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. 
Have you tried the Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, they're all so good. These are going to be your new favorite. All built bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, that's the puffs too. 100% chocolate. They're low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere between two to 300 calories. Ouch. Go to built.com and scroll down to the macros chart. You'll be blown away. High protein, low calorie, high fiber. Most Bilt Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So make good on your New Year's resolution and stick with Bilt Bar. Put away those candy bars. It's no good for you. Go to Bilt.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Bilt.com. Thank you, Bilt Bar. All right, before we get going in this next segment, we are going to talk about Locked On Now. What is Locked On Now, you ask? Well, Locked On Now is our team of local experts. That's right, we have Locked On hosts for every team in the NHL. So, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you're a Capitals fan, but say you're not, there will be a Locked On host in your town. And you don't need to waste your time with those one-hour NHL programs just hoping to hear about the Capitals or your favorite team. Keep it to Locked On now and be in the know when it comes to the Washington Capitals or your favorite team. All right, so what changes will the Washington Capitals have to make next year? I think you know where I'm going with this, and things could change. It's kind of in flux right now. How will Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek play? That will determine what happens next year. Yes, that big position I'm talking about. The Capitals look to make a change up in goaltending. And uh, I, I don't think that should come as any surprise. Tarek Elbashir was uh, on the radio the other day, and he says, I don't see how the Caps enter next season with Vanacek and Samsonov as their two goalies. To me, they need to settle on one and then bring in a 30-something who will not only be a number one option, but also serve as a mentor to the young netminder they end up keeping. And uh, I think that, you know, I, we've talked about that, and that's not a very novel thing to say. I think to bring in a veteran netminder to an inexperienced tandem only seems like common sense to me. So I think that, uh, you know, he wasn't reinventing the wheel by making that comment, but I do think there's legitimacy there. They had Craig Anderson last year, which who has been playing pretty lights out for Buffalo, I got to say. I was a little disappointed that they got rid of him because if you look at how he's playing with the Buffalo Sabres, I think to myself, they could use some of that on the Washington Capitals again. I mean, you take these two inexperienced netminders, maybe have one bench one of them for a while, and how great would it be to put in Craig Anderson right now? I think that would be big for this team right now, but they don't have it, so they have to go with what they have and tank. So in that article, they talk about the different changes that need to be made and uh, that uh, Huso is obviously younger than what Bashir suggests the Capitals will be looking for, but he's also going to be one of the better options if there isn't something available to trade. Someone like Simeon Varlamov would fit the description, and he does have a brief history with a team dating back to 2010, and that goes back some ways. Um, I'm sure most of you know, if you're longtime Caps fans, that Simeon Varlamov did, in fact, play with the Washington Capitals, and he also did have a rapport with the Russians on the team at the time. It was Alex Ovechkin, and at the time, Alex Semin, um, if you go back far enough, Fedorov, etc., but I think that Simeon Varlamov would be an okay fit for the Washington Capitals. He's definitely getting to that age where he's not going to be the guy that's going to uh, uh, play a majority of the game. So like what Tarek was talking about there, he's spot on there, saying that they need a 30-something that's going to anchor that ship down so and kind of serve as a mentor to one of those younger goalies, you know, unless they go out and get someone like Braden Holtby. I know that they're not going to get him this year, of course, because we're after the trade deadline, but I don't think that the Washington Capitals have fully given up on the idea of bringing Holtz back to the district. It remains to be seen. I don't know 
if the stars are going to want to give up what, you know, what they have in him, he's a solid netminder. but it just seems to be that there's so much talk about Braden Holtby coming back to the capitals. I would not be surprised if it happens, especially if you consider all the players that they've talked about coming back and then them bringing back Marcus Johansson. It seems like the capitals sometimes take the nostalgic route and nothing against Braden Holtby, but I would like to know what Braden Holtby are we getting? Are we getting 2018 Braden Holtby? Are we getting the one uh, when he played for the Vancouver Canucks and he made a quick exit exit there? There's so many things to know. And I think that a lot of Braden Holtby's success with the Capitals was tied to, in fact, I know it was, uh, with having Mitch Korn, the goalie whisperer, on the team. If you look at the stats, at how Braden Holtby his game increased ever since Mitch Korn came to the team, it's quite staggering. Look it up. So a lot of the credit has to go to not only Brayden Holpe, but it has to go to Mitch Korn. And if you don't believe that, take a look at his record. Look at what he did with Pekarine and the different goalies, the uh, uh, Hutton, I believe, at the time on the Predators. Look at what he did. Pekarine on the Nashville Predators was a great goalie, but no doubt that had a lot to do with what Mitch Korn did for them. So Brayden Holpe gets credit, but also give credit to Mitch Korn, so I don't, you know, it seems like he's doing okay with Dallas this season, but, you know, Brain Holpe is getting older as well. It kind of ties in with what they're talking about, what Tarek Elbashir was talking about, getting that 30-year uh, old goaltender um, just to kind of steady the the ship. And, you know, Brain Holpe is going to have to accept that if he is not playing in top form, that he's going to be a backup goalie. I don't know how he will feel about that, especially considering his history with the Washington Capitals. And it is a fabled history. If you think about it, he is the netminder of record for the 2018 Stanley Cup. So I know that there's a lot of fans that have fond memories, as do I. I mean, I have one of his jerseys, for God's sakes. I'm a huge Braden Holtby fan. Get Make no mistake about it, but... It's just uh, I, I don't want to be a revisionist and and re, you know forget how things really went towards his the end of his career with the Washington Capitals. He did not play that well, so I think the Capitals might have to go out and get that seasoned veteran. Um, and it's going to remain to be seen who is available. You know they're going to have to wait until the Stanley Cup is done. So if the Capitals aren't playing, they're going to have to wait until June, uh, whenever the Stanley Cup is done, and then they're going to have to make decisions. So it's going to be some time before, you know, they decide on who they're going to get in net. A lot of that hinges on the play of Vitek Vanacek and Ilya Samsonov as they make their push for the playoffs. The Capitals are in. I mean, unless something really strange happened and the Islanders really just poured it on, the Capitals are almost assured a playoff spot, a wild card spot. So it's go, it, like I say, it's going to be an interesting to see what happens, but I, you know, and I've talked about this a lot and I don't, you know, you know people are like, you've talked about Zach Fucali so much. Well, I think he deserves a shot. Take a look at his record. He has three shutouts with Hershey this year, and he's played pretty lights out for that Hershey Bears team. And he played well for the Capitals when he played. So if they don't have who they need in net, on the Capitals team right now, look to Hershey. They have two viable options, Phoenix Copley, who has a ton of NHL experience, and they have Zach Fukali, who has a ton of AHL experience. So they might not necessarily have to look outside the organization, but it will be interesting to see who the netminder is for your Washington Capitals next season. All right, after the break, we are going to talk about the NHL playoff picture. Where do the Capitals fit in? Where... Who are they going to play? Chances are it's going to be the Panthers, but how will they fare? We're going to talk about that after the break. But first, Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Master Champions odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting and esports scores. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so the Capitals are most likely going to be heading to the playoffs. We know that. Where do the Capitals fit in in the scheme of things? There was an article on Bleacher Report I was taught, was reading earlier, and they said the Capitals will hold off challengers for number eight seed in the East. And it kind of, you know, it remains to be seen where the Capitals will finish. It would only take a fairly big collapse for the Washington Capitals to miss out on their playoffs this year. 
through 70 games, they have 86 points with a 38, 22 and 10 record. And while they are six points back of Pittsburgh for the number seven spot, they are also 13 points ahead of the New York Islanders who would be the first team out. And I don't think that uh, the New York Islanders have enough in tank to take them and catapult them past the Washington Capitals. I don't. They've had their struggles all year. And the interesting thing about the New York Islanders is it's not totally their fault. They had a lot of games that were canceled and rescheduled more than most with COVID. So I I don't think that you can totally dismiss the Islanders team. That's Barry Trott's team after all. Uh, He's pushing the buttons and pulling the strings for that Islanders team. They just had some really big setbacks. So I I don't think that will be the case, but anything is possible. The uh, Detroit Red Wings will soon be eliminated from postseason contention, which will leave only the Islanders and Columbus Blue Jackets as teams that could catch the caps. Even though Washington has endured goaltender woes this season, its roster is too talented to fall short of the playoffs. Playoffs. Alex Ovechkin may be 36, but he's still one of the NHL's best players. He ranks fourth in the league with 43 goals, and he also has 38 assists. Ovechkin is surrounded by Evgeny Kuznetsov, Tom Wilson, Nicholas Backstrom, TJ Oshie, and high-scoring defenseman John Carlson, so offense isn't a problem in Washington. If the Caps can get better goaltending from either Ilya Samsonov or Vitek Vanacek, they could be a sleeper team in the playoffs. They are going to get to the postseason with no trouble, but they will have to wait the first round matchup against the Panthers to look to see what to look forward to. And if they end up playing the Panthers, that'll be a tough one. They were the first one to clinch it, and they're playing very well this year. Florida is a strong team, but Washington boasts players who know what it takes to make a deep playoff run considering the team won the Stanley Cup in 2018. So it will be interesting to see what happens when these franchises match up. While there could be some tight seating battles higher up in the Eastern Conference standings, there won't be any major shakeups. The top eight teams are composed and will make it to the postseason, and it should be exciting to watch as they face off. And there's going to be it's going to be an exciting postseason. Make no mistake about it. Uh, the Washington Capitals will be in there, but even the Washington Capitals withstanding, it's going to be interesting to see how these teams fare. Carolina is playing very well this year. The Minnesota Wild are playing well this year. Colorado is playing well. There's so many teams that typically, you know, kind of uh, are up and down that are really great this year. Carolina, who kind of was so so for so many years with under the tutelage of, <clears throat> excuse me, Rob Brindamore, is playing very well. It's a physical style of hockey and uh you know whoever ends up playing carolina expect a big physical game make no mistake about it they're going to bring it that's his style take a look at the guy's nose he definitely likes to fight there's no doubt about it <clears throat> excuse me so it's going to be an interesting thing for a lot of the teams in the metro and all around the nhl really to see where they finish so depending on where the capitals finish i hope they can make a push and win the stanley cup but if they make a quick exit It's still going to be a fun playoffs to watch. Make no mistake about it. It'll be fun. The Capitals, who have, you know, struggled through a lot of adversity this year, are still going to make it to the playoffs. And like what I talked about in the previous podcast is that you have to be proud of this Washington Capitals team. You really do. They make it to the playoffs most every year. And if you want to take a look around the league, take a look at the the Coyotes, take a look at the Red Wings, take a look at the Sabres, look at the Devils, teams that haven't made it to the playoffs or a Stanley Cup for years, in some case, decades. So let's give credit to the Washington Capitals for playing really great hockey. Regardless of how the season finishes this year, this is still one heck of a team that always makes it to the playoffs. There's only one time I can think in recent memory that the Capitals haven't made it to the playoffs. So let's not be so down on a team that's proven, you know, if you remember 2018, they were down and out against Columbus and then against Tampa. Guess who won the Stanley Cup? Who hoisted the Stanley Cup over their head in 2018 against all adversity? Because even after they made it past Columbus, they made it past Tampa, they made it to the Vegas Golden Knights. Everyone said, well, they got lucky to make it this far, but it's curtains for that Washington Capitals team. Guess again, take a look at the history. They ended up winning the Stanley Cup against big odds. They beat the Vegas Golden Knights, which were surging all season. So let's not get down on this team. Who knows what will happen? Maybe they'll make a really big run, and maybe they will be the Stanley Cup champions once again. 
All right. I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Locked on Capitals. This is the Friday episode, and there is going to be a lot of hockey coming up. I hope you guys are prepared for some fun. Because even, you know, I was watching games last night. It doesn't even have to be the Capitals. They're just fun games all around the league. It's getting to the nitty gritty, and it almost feels like playoff hockey. Things are getting physical out there. Now make your second listen, Locked on Fantasy Hockey. Host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked on Capitals. I'll talk to you again on Monday. Thanks for listening.